So here we are, we're gonna show treatment that we do for post-concussion syndrome and cervical cranial syndrome, which are very similar. And what we need to do is to give injections very high up in the cervical cranial junction and treat the upper cervical vertebrae. And this really needs to be done by someone who has a very, very good understanding of anatomy because if it's not done properly, the results could be devastating instead of life-changing. As you may have heard or may have read from some of my um, other videos or information, this is a treatment that I actually developed on myself and I had to give myself these injections in the same area that I'm giving our patient. And I did so originally behind my head with no mirrors, doing it in the same way that I'm doing now, strictly by knowing my anatomy. And I could feel where the needle was in my neck. I knew the areas that I needed to treat in order to take away 10 years of post-concussion syndrome. And that was over 19 years ago when I did it and discovered it. And thank God, I have been in really good shape and I felt really well. Now many of you think that yes, perhaps that was risky, Perhaps that was you know, um, somewhat dangerous, but the fact of the matter is, is that when you're desperate and no one's helped you, you need to take action, and that's exactly what I did. And fortunately, me taking action and figuring out how I should treat myself really has changed not only my life, but has changed the life of thousands of patients that have entered into this office. So we've treated the upper cervical vertebrae. And now I'm gonna show you treatment of the occiput, which is right above here. So here we have treatment of the occiput. And again, you need to know your anatomy because it does not grow in a straight line and we need to get the various portions of the occiput. This is the portion in addition to the upper cervical vertebrae that can be triggering the severe headaches that patients have in post-concussion syndrome. In addition to that, I also have patients that have been diagnosed with occipital neuralgia. And in fact, they may not have occipital neuralgia. They may just have damage to the occiput. And therefore, when we treat them, they get better. The only difference is when a occipital neuralgia patient is treated traditionally with a nerve block, the results may be temporary. If we can rebuild the damage in the occiput, and this is what the patient's problem is, then the results will be much longer lasting. And here we're gonna treat some of the areas of the lower cervical spine. Again, if we know our anatomy, we can safely do this procedure and be able to hit all of our insertional points without harming the patient. These areas here can typically refer pain into the shoulder, sometimes into the head, and they need to be taken care of. So again, here's treatment of the upper cervical spine, at the C1, C2 junction. Again, it needs to be performed very cautiously, very carefully. extreme knowledge of anatomy and lots of experience in performing these injections. If not, your patient's going to suffer. If you know how to do this procedure safely, you can make it to be bearable. inject along the spinous processes and the transverse processes in the same the same sweep as we inject around the facet joints
So most patients tolerate the procedure very well. Injections can be somewhat uncomfortable. Obviously you're injecting into an area of pain, but it's a few minutes of discomfort, which is well tolerated by the patient. And when we get enough rebuilding, it makes lifelong changes. So I personally think that it's well worthwhile to go to undergo in the patient who's properly selected by physical examination, by their history, and knowledge of their accident. So again, we're going to show treatment around the occiput as well. Again, the needle holes are small. There's really minimal bleeding. There's minimal discomfort. The patient can tolerate the procedure really well. The patient's easily able to drive home afterwards. In most cases, they might be a little stiff and sore afterwards, but that's a small price to pay in order to obtain long lasting relief from debilitating post-concussion and cervical cranial syndrome. Thank you.